What's up, everybody? You are watching a brand new episode of Extra Turns. That's right. We have a really exciting game. We have Derek and Ken from the YouTube channel One More Mana in the house to take on Jimmy and Rachel. I'm not in this game. I'm just a bystander. Yeah, and it is a really wild game with a lot of fun twists and turns. But before we get into it, we got to talk about our sponsors. First up, cardkingdom.com slash command. They're the place you want to go if you want to buy any of your magic singled, sealed product, and more. Look, you're going to see some really fun cards in this episode, including one that packs a lot of power and you might want to include it in your next deck you might want to rabble up some rousing wait you might want to route wait you might want to ra- <laughs> don't wait just rabble up some rousing <laughs> you might want to rabble some rouse and rouse some rabble that all in if you, in this next game so make sure you check out cardcamecom slash command because they've got the card you want in the style you want and you can order it all at once so it comes to your doorstep in one convenient package so you can sleeve it all up and get playing instantly, which is the way you want to go. And best part is you're supporting shows just like this when you do so. So check out that affiliate link. And rabble some rousing. And rabble some rousing. Oh boy. (laughs) Once you get the cards, make sure you protect them. Use the Game Accessories brand that Jimmy and I trust our own collections to. That is ultrapro.com slash command. You know, if you're like me, you haven't bought all the holiday <laughs> presents for people that you're supposed to. And like I'm not. Yourself? <laughs> yeah, and it's days beforehand. So I'm not in any way promising that either Card Kingdom or Ultra Pro can get stuff in time. <laughs> but that's okay. Some of your, you know, more far flung relatives, it's okay if their there stuff shows up a little bit late. Trust me, I know this from experience. And <laughs> if they, if you know they have like a certain deck, Ooh. it's hard to buy a card for them for that deck because they know the deck better than you do. But it's easy to buy them a playmat yeah. with the commander on it or sleep leaves with the commander on it, or a deck box with the commander on it, or all three of those things, or dice that match the color, or a wall scroll that can go in their game room. So ultrapro.com slash command, the best place to go to buy the best game accessories, so we can't recommend them highly enough. And the last way to support the show is directly, patreon.com slash command zone. We love our patrons, we have a Discord where we chat to them every single day, and you can join our amazing community there. You also get access to shows like Extra Turns and Game Nights a day early ad-free, so you may have already seen this episode, you know what rabbles have been roused, so... <laughs> Make sure you check out patreon.com slash command zone. We have all sorts of different tiers, different bonuses, and really there's a lot to gain from our Patreon. So just go ahead and sign up. You're directly supporting the show, and it helps us make the content that we love to make for you. All right, let's get into this game. I got to say, the, the ending of this game is a real nail biter. It's a fun so one. Make sure you stick around the whole way. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Extra Turns. Today is a great episode because we have two new worthy opponents. Hey, what's happening, everybody? You already know who it is. My name is Hido Ken. Remember, when everybody else can't, Hido Ken. And I'm from the crew One More Mana. Yo, it is Derek from One More Mana, part of the Mana Squad. So over on the channel, you can find us being petty, talking about cards, misevaluating things, having a great time. And you know we had to make our way over to the command zone and get on Extra Turns. And the deck that I'll be playing today is Intet the Dreamer. My deck's early game is just to ramp and protect myself. But once my commander hits the battlefield, I can use its abilities to cheat some huge game-ending creatures. With the board of giant Eldrazi's, dinosaurs, and worms, I'll crush my opponents with sure brute force. Hey, it's Rachel, and today I'm playing Mangara the Diplomat. This is a mono-white good stuff deck. It's designed to show off what white is really good at. It uses removal, recursion, and a ton of resilience to be the last one standing. And the commander I'm playing today is Slogurk the Overslime, or Mr. Gurk, as his friends call him. This deck loves to send land straight into the graveyard. So I've got tons of ways to mill them, sacrifice them, or discard them for value. And since that'll grow my trampling commander, I can attack with the ooze to make my opponents lose. Today, I'm going to be playing Halden and his best friend, Paco. This deck is loaded up with super strong control pieces. So with my commander's built-in card advantage, I should have protection for the puppy and removal for relevant threats. Then once my dog is big enough, it'll chomp through my opponents with some crushing extra combats. All right, get ready to get girt. I'm sending my opponents to the doghouse. Prepare for some law and order. All right, let's get it. All right, y'all ready? Yeah, let's do it. it. Let's dance. All right, let's kick this off. I'm gonna go ahead and draw this magical card. I'm gonna play Catrio Triumph. Great Triumph. And then I'll pass to you, Jimmy. Okay, 
I will draw my card for the turn, and then I will play a Windswept Heat, and I'm going to immediately crack it and find a Tropical Island. Cool. I'll lose one life for that and go to 39. I'm gonna tap the Tropical Island, and I will play Miri's Guile. Sweet. And that's it, pass turn. I will draw for turn. I'm gonna go ahead and play a Field of the Dead tapped. Mm. Nice. Already. Uh, super fair and balanced magic card, never broke anything. Uh, I will pass the turn. <laughs> totally fine. I will draw for turn. I will play this Snow-Covered Plains, and I will use it to cast a Devoted Caretaker. With that, I will pass to you, Ken. Okay, I'm gonna untap, pray to any god that will listen, draw, and then I will play a Temple of Abandoned, because that's You've been I'm, abandoned. <laughs> the gods have abandoned you. <laughs> yeah, it's the scry land, I will scry. And then you will cry. No. I will keep that there. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That was a sneaky scry. That was a giggly scry, which is scarier. Yeah. <laughs> then I should pass the 10. Okay, I will untap. During my upkeep, Miri's Guile will trigger, so I'm gonna look at the top three cards of my library and put them back in any order. I will put them back in this order, and then I will draw my card for the turn. I am going to play a Snow-Covered Mountain. I'll tap two and cast Nature's Lore. Nice. So I will find Breathing Pool, and I'm gonna have that enter the battlefield untapped, so I will pay two life going to 37. I will then tap that Breathing Pool, and I'll cast a Birds of Paradise. And that's gonna do it for me, pass turn. I'll untap. Draw for turn. I'm gonna play a tapped breeding pool, and then I'm going to tap the Field of the Dead to play an expedition map. Super harmless lands in the deck. It's, you know, I'm gonna get a basic. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna pass the turn. I will untap and draw for turn. Then I'm gonna play another Snow Covered Plains, and I will play Stoneforge Mystic. When that enters the battlefield, I will search my deck. I can grab any equipment card, and the one I'm gonna get is Sword of Hearth and Home. Ooh. That'll go into my hand. That's all I got for now. I will pass the turn. All right, I'm gonna untap, draw. I will play Island, and then tap three to summon my inner bad bunny to play Rhythm of the Wild. Nice. Do, do, do. Pass, hey. do, do, do. You're smiling too much, Ken. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna untap on my upkeep. Miri's Guile will trigger. I'll look at the top three cards of my library. I will put them back on top like that, and then I will draw my card for turn. Okie dokes. I'll play a mountain as my land for turn. And then I will tap five mana and cast my commander, Paco, Arcane Retriever. Oof. Bark. <laughs> Paco has haste, I will go to combat, and there's one player at this table that will have more life gain than everyone else, and that's Rachel Weeks. Oh no. <laughs> so I will swing Paco at you, Rachel. When Paco attacks, he will trigger. So everyone eggs out of the top card of their library. This okay. is gonna be a big dog. <laughs> All right, three of those were non-creature spells, so Paco is gonna get three plus one plus one counters and become a six six. And then I will put the cards exiled with Paco over here with a fetch counter on them. Paco and Haldan only care about non-creature cards, so the only ones that matter here are Halimar Depths, Stomping Ground, and Hardened Scales. Again, now we'll go to blocks. Oof, uh, no blocks. I have to build my board at six commander damage. Okay, everyone hates me, pass turn. I'm going to untap, I will draw for turn. I'm going to play a Flooded Strand as my land for turn. I'll crack it right away. I'll search for either an island or a plains card. I'll get this tropical island. This will go into play, and I'll go to 39. And I'm gonna cast my commander, Slogurk the Overslide. Or as I call him, Mr. Gurk. Dirk McGurk. Mr. Gurk! Mr. Gurk is here to party. Um, I am going to pass the turn to you, Rachel. All right, I will untap and draw for turn. I will play a Snow-Covered Plains, and then I will cast an Oketra's Monument. Ooh, great card. Then I will pass the turn. All right, I will, I will untap, draw. Now I'll play Island, and then I'll tap four, Migration Path. That was like a Charleston that tap, was you know? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It, like the seas parted. It was like a... But I kind of want to tap like that now, where you're like, oh! <laughs> you gotta like flex while you do it, yeah. too. It also wasn't really a scary spell. It was <laughs> yeah, just yeah, yeah. like, slam! Explosive vegetation. <laughs> I'll get a forest and a mountain, and then I'll put them into the battlefield tap. And then I should pass the turn. Alrighty, I'll untap all of my stuff. On my upkeep, Miri's Guy will trigger again, so I'll look at the top three cards of my library. I'll put them back in this order, and then I will draw my card for the turn. Okay, I'm gonna tap for two mana and cast a Growth Spiral. <sighs> so much ramp. So I'll draw a card, and I can put a land from my hand onto the battlefield. It will be an island. Then I will tap three mana and cast my other commander, Halden, Avid Arcanist. Uh-oh. Now that both of my commanders are out, I can play the cards I fetch from exile, so I will kick things off and I will play this 
Stomping ground, tapped. Yeah, that is my, that's my own card right there. I mean, it hurts. And then I'll tap my last land here, and I'm also gonna play this Hardened Scales. Thank you so much. Mm. It's very good with Paco. So we're in agreement that this I'm the problem. problem. I can't say that until after he goes to combat. I see, I see. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Jimmy is just a nah. beautiful man with a beautiful dog. Well, can you art the highest life total? Yeah, that's relative. But you haven't done anything either. Yeah, don't start now. He's got six lands. He does. Yeah, okay, all right. As much mana as you do. I think it is correct to attack Ken here. So I am going to go to combat, and Paco is going to swing at Ken. All right, Paco is going to trigger, so everyone please exile the top card of your library. Okay, oh. a Chroma's Will. Uh, all right, so that is... <laughs> So everyone please give me those cards, I will fetch them. I got a Rewind, a Teleria West, a Chroma's Will, and another Stomping Ground. So four non-creature spells were shown, so that's four 1-1 one -one counters, but I have Hardened Scales, so I actually add one more. So now it is a 11-11. Damage? I'll take 11 Commander damage. Ooch. Going to 29. I'm just saying, after today I'm a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for Harmless Old Me. Pass turn. I'm going to untap, draw for turn, cry, and then pull myself together here. I'm going to tap for two mana and sacrifice my expedition map. I'll search my library and I'm able to get any land card. I will get the answer that I will think will scare away this puppy for the moment, and that is a maze of if. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, how's Paco at mazes? Yeah, very bad. <laughs> this is great. He loves running them though. <laughs> It'll get bigger. <laughs> I will play the Maze of Ith as my land for a turn. And the way I see it is like, I don't want to harm your puppy. I just want to keep him entertained. Yeah, I'll run through point. a maze. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's dog treats. Mm. I'm also going to keep up a blocker just in case that maze gets blown up and I will pass <laughs> the turn to Rachel. <laughs> All right, I will untap and draw for turn. First, I will play a Snow Covered Plains. And then, because creatures cost one less to cast, I will cast Mangara for just three mana. When I cast a creature spell, I will make a 1 1 white warrior creature token with Vigis. Nice. Uh, that's the best I got. I'll pass to you, Ken. I'm going to untap all my things and then draw a card. I shall play a land for turn. That is a Temple of the False God. Nice. Right on curve. I shall tap eight mana. Whoa. Let's have a little fun. A storm is brewing. Male storm water. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Paco's not that bad anymore, right? <laughs> Can't be countered. The Cascade triggers will go off. Here's Cascade 1. Uh, ooh. Okay, Elvish Piper. Elvish Piper. Okay. And the second. Ugh. Ashnod's Altar. Okay. These are bad hits. Elvish Piper is your second spell for turn, so I will draw from Megara. And because of Rhythm of the Wild, these two creatures have Riot. And because they all have haste, I think I'm gonna give them extra haste. Nah, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'll put a 1 1 counter on both of them. Elvis Piper is now a 2 2, and Melster Wonder is now an 8 6. Yikes. Pretty good. And I should pass the turn. Do you want my swing? No, I need, I need protection. Okay. okay. Interesting. I was fully expecting to get smacked for 8, but. <laughs> I, I have other plans. <laughs> I, I bet. Yeah, your deck is scary. Okay, I will untap all of my stuff. And then Miri's Guile will trigger on my upkeep. So I'll look at the top three cards in my library and put them back in any order. All right, I'll put them back like this and then I will draw my card for a turn. I will go to combat and I feel like I just have to get the Maze of It to tap. And I'm just gonna make it do it the most direct way. You're the only person I haven't attacked. That's Derek. true, I feel, I feel left out. Yeah, so I'll go to combat and Paco is gonna swing at you. So everyone, please on attack, exile the top card of your library. Okay, and then please give them to me. Do I have to? Yes, you do. Oh boy. That's another four non-creature spells. Yeah. And with hardened scales, that means Paco's gonna get five plus one plus one counters. Paco is now a 16-16. Approaching Clifford status. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll represent it like that. It went from Chihuahua to Mastiff real quick. Mm. <laughs> Clifford the big rule dog. <laughs> I'll put these with fetch counters on them, and then we'll go to the rest of combat. Yes, I will activate my Maze of Ith to remove Paco from combat. So Paco untaps and no damage is dealt. I guess I'll just make myself even more of a, a villain, so I'll tap five mana, and I'll cast a Seedborn Muse. Oh god. You feel good about this, Jimmy? Yeah, I feel great. You feel good about what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, we're on turn four, still. I mean, you should have all the exile effects. I should. But he doesn't have a counter spell. Yeah. Yeah. I will then tap for two more mana, and I will cast a Farseek. That will trigger Mangara, and I will draw a card. I will find a Ketria Trium, and that will enter the battlefield tapped. And then, from my exile fetch pile, I will play a land for turn, and that is Halimar Depths, which allows me to look at the top three cards in my library and put them back in any order. And I'll put them back like that. 
And then I will pass turn to you, Derek. I will untap. When you untap, Seaborn Muse will allow me to untap all of my permanents. I will draw for turn. I'm gonna play Yavamaya Cradle of Growth as my land for turn. Ooh. I think my best bet is to just try to bait out that counter spell because it feels like it's coming regardless. So yeah. I'm going to tap my Yavamaya and my Field of the Dead to cast a Mesmeric Orb. Oh, Ooh. that's spicy. Mm. Why does that help anybody? He's untapping quite a few times. Yeah, I'm gonna mill yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Do I actually care? I'm gonna let that resolve. Mm. Really? Yeah. Okay. I will pass the turn. All right, I will untap. I will mill three because of Mesmeric Orb. I will mill the planes I wanted to draw, a soul ring I could have drawn, and a Reverend Hoplite. Those will go into my graveyard. Then I will draw for turn. I'm going to activate my Stoneforge Mystic to put that Sword of Hearth and Home into play. And then I'm gonna play a Terrain Generator as my land for turn. Then I will tap two to give Mangara this Sword of Hearth and Home. Jimmy Wong, I'm going to attack you with a politician. With a sword. I'm going to go to, <laughs> I'm going to, go to combat. Okay. And I will attack you with a 4-6 protection from green and white. 4-6 pro green and white. I'm not going to do anything, so I will take 4 damage and go to 33. That is commander damage, but he also has lifelink, so I will gain 4 going to 38. On combat damage, Sword of Hearth and Home will trigger. So I will go get a Planes from my deck, and I will also blink the Stoneforge Mystic. So the Planes will come into play. Then Stoneforge's ETB will trigger, and I will search my library for any equipment card. I don't have anything that's gonna be particularly helpful right now, but I can always draw more cards. So I'll find a Skull Clamp. Interesting. Then I'm just gonna cast that Skull Clamp. Okay, that does it for me. I will pass. See what horrors await. I will untap. Mesmeric Orb will trigger. So unfortunately, I will have to mill seven cards. And there are five lands, a counterspell, and a Ragavan. Those are not bad mills. I am friend. <laughs> we are besties. Thanks, Slogar. <laughs> then I will draw for turn. And this morning, I woke up and decided to choose violence. So I will pay a green and tap Elvish Piper to bring in Ulamog. Uh-oh. <laughs> Can't counter that. Nope. There's a trigger on the stack from Rhythm of the Wild, mm -hmm. and I will put a counter on top of Ulamog. Ulamog is now an 11-11 indestructible creature. That's good. Can't see why anyone would be worried about that. And then I will bait out a counter spell by casting. You guys are really bad at baiting out counter spells. <laughs> trying so you're hard. not supposed to say that you're baiting it. <laughs> I told you, poker's not my specialty. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. <laughs> ah! Renicus is vital duplication. Uh, okay. Oh. That's gonna bait out a counter spell <laughs> for sure. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna tap for four mana, and I will cast your rewind to counter that spell. Alright. I will untap up to four lands, and I'm gonna choose actually to untap zero lands. Okay. So that goes back to your graveyard. Okay. Thank goodness. That would have been real bad. Tulamogs. Tulamogs. <laughs> one non-legendary and one legendary. Both will taste. Tulamogs, my favorite uh, rap one with two count. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a time where a dog would fetch him. I decided to pee on my lawn. <laughs> so in return, I will go to combat and swing an 11-11 at Sir Jimmy. Hmm, that's a lot of damage. Oh, but before the damage, there's a trigger on the stack. I'm gonna exile the top 20 cards in my library. So I'm gonna exile 20 cards. <sighs> and there's a lot of good stuff in here, I'm sure. Oh, oh yeah. Jesus. Oh, that was the force of will. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here. So it doesn't really matter. All that stuff's gonna go ahead and go like that. <laughs> I will go to block with my Paco and Howdan. And before damage, any effects? No effects. Before damage, I'm gonna tap four mana and I'm gonna cast this Acroma's Will. And I'm going to give my creatures Flying Vigilance, Double Strike, and Lifelink Indestructible, and Protection. Would you like fries with that? Uh, I would. <laughs> so that's gonna be a 16-16 Paco with Double Strike and Lifelink. This goes back to your graveyard, Rachel. Thank you. Yeah. Jimmy, a Chroma's Will is your second spell, so I will draw a magic card. So I will gain 32 life, and I'll go from 33 to 65. And then they bounce off each other. I don't, it's, honestly, I'd rather it was used here. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm done, go ahead and pass the turn. Let's go ahead and untap and get orbed out. So I'm gonna mill eight cards from Mesmeric Orb. Oh my god. And then on my upkeep, Miri's Guy will trigger, so I'll look at the top three of my library. I will put them back like that, and then I will draw my card for the turn. I'm going to play a Wooded Foothills as my land for turn, and I'm going to immediately crack it. 
going to 64. My library is so small. I will find a steam vent that's gonna come into play untapped, so I'll take another two life and go to 62. I will then tap four mana. I'm gonna cast Invasion of Kaldheim with 10 protecting it. No, he won't. So that is going to enter with four defense counters on it. I'm going to exile all the cards from my hand and then draw that many cards. Until the end of my next turn, I can play those cards I exile. Yup. So my hand is a Trinket Mage and a Memory Lapse. And then I will draw two cards. I'm gonna go to combat. Mm -hmm. Combat one bet. Ken, I'm gonna swing at you with my Paco. All right, Paco's gonna trigger, so everyone please exile the top card of your library. Ooh, ball of good recovery. All right, please hand them over to me, as they are now fetched. That's four non-creature cards, so Paco will get four 1-1 counters, and that's gonna be five because of hardened scales. Not good. Paco's now a 21-21, and uh, we can move to the rest of combat. I'm going to block with Maelstrom Wonder. Nice. In my second main, I'm gonna tap three mana, and I will cast my Trinket Mage from Exile. That's your second spell, so I will draw. With my Trinket Mage, I can search my library for an artifact with mana value one or less. I will find a Sensei's Divining Top and put that in my hand. I will then tap for three mana, and I'm gonna cast my Balaged Recovery. Mm. I will return C double from my graveyard to my hand. Sweet. And that's going to do it for me. I'll pass turn. Before your end step, I will float three mana. Okay. And do nothing with it and move to my turn. <laughs> I will untap. When you untap, Seedborn Muse will have me untap everything as well. And then Mesmeric Orb is gonna trigger for both of us. I will mill first, and I will mill 11 cards. Oh my god. You play a dangerous game, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not much I can do here. And then I'll mill next, and I'm gonna mill five cards. Uh, amongst the five cards, there are no lands. Ooh. Whoa! Brutal. I will draw for turn. I'll play an Argoth Sanctum of Nature as my land for turn. I control a green legendary creature, so it'll come into play untapped. Then I'm gonna tap two mana and cast an Excavation. Cool. So we can pay mana to sacrifice our lands. All of us can do this? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, at instant speed? Yeah. Yes. The Gurk's just gonna keep hanging out. He's having a great day in his little swamp spa, living his best life, and I'm going to pass the turn to Rachel. On your end step, I'm gonna flash in a Deep Gnome Terramancer. When I cast the Gnome, a monument will trigger, and I will also get a Warrior token. Then I will untap, and I will mill seven. Yikes. Bunch of creatures in here. The scariest thing is probably God Eternal Oketra or Battle Angels of Tear. There's also a Palace Jailer. Then I will draw for turn. And then activate the Stoneforge Mystic. And I am going to put a Sword of Feast and Famine into play. Oh, baby. That's a card. Yeah, I'm going to mill a lot. But <laughs> <laughs> fine, everyone's, right? Uh, yeah, everyone's milling now. Uh, I'm going to pay two to give the sword to Mangara. That is a hostile diplomat. Then I'm going to pay two mana for a Righteous Aura. Then I will go to combat. Jimmy has a blue blocker. No which, blockers here. Yep, I think I have to smack Ken. <laughs> Only one blocker here. Unfortunately. <laughs> All right, Ken, I'm going to send Mangara your way. Total damage. Six. I will take six damage. And I will gain six, going to 44. On combat damage, Sword of Hearth and Home will trigger. I am going to blink Stoneforge Mystic once again and go find a planes. That's pretty good. It'll come back, its ability will trigger, and I found a Lion Sash. Now Sword of Feast and Famine triggers, which means, Ken, you will discard a card. Okay, I will sadly discard a Progenitor's Mimic. Yeah, that seems, Ooh. seems fine. And I will untap my lands, which is six of them, so I will mill six. I have milled an Angel of the Ruins, a Grand Abolisher, Archivist of Ogma, and a Sword of Fire and Ice. And first, I am going to attempt to cast a Lion Sash. Go for it. I also make another warrior from the monument. I have a colorless floating, so I can answer this Ulamog. I would prefer not to if it's going at Jimmy. Well, originally it wasn't. If, if I don't answer Ulamog this turn, it doesn't attack me next turn. Okay. 1,000%. Great. Okay, so I will use the colorless and four additional mana, and I will cast a Karmic Guide. Interesting. When Karmic Guide enters the battlefield, I will reanimate a Grand Abolisher. Oh. In response to the Karmic Guide trigger, Derek, I'm going to activate the ability on your excavation to sack my forest to draw a card. Thank you, Excavation. See, we're friends, Ken. Yeah. Karmic Guide is a creature, which will trigger Oketra's Monument. So I'll make another warrior. And then I'm gonna pay one, and I'm gonna put that Skull Clamp on Karmic Guide. 
Oh. And I will pass the turn. I'm gonna go ahead and untap and unfortunately <laughs> trigger Miss Mary Orb. Six cards mill. Six cards mill. All right, so I mill three lands, but more importantly, Agent of Treachery and a Gaia's Blessing. Now, when Gaia Blessing go to my graveyard, mm -hmm. it has an ability where I can shuffle my graveyard into my library, so. Look at you, mill support. And now I will draw for turn. That's interesting. You gotta think. No. Okay. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> Going to combat. Going to combat. I will swing Ulamo. At who? What's up, Jimmy? Are you doing some sort of early New Year's or something? Nah, I'm just still celebrating how much fun our first ever Whatnot stream was. Oh yeah, that was a blast. If you haven't heard of Whatnot, you gotta check it out. Whatnot is a live shopping platform. It's a great place to hunt for rare and unique collectibles or just grab some sweet cards for your next commander deck. And what's even better is you get to do it all while hanging out with the community in a live stream setting. Yeah, maybe you get a cool version of a card, but you're buying it from Ashlyn or the professor or us. And maybe we even sign it before we send it if that's what you want. That's the type of interaction that can happen only on Whatnot. Yeah, honestly, it makes buying cards sometimes more fun than playing them. And it's not just magic. They've got sports cards, sneakers, comic books. If it's a collectible, you can find it on Whatnot. So get in on the action right now at whatnot.com slash invite slash command. That way you can make sure you're there the moment we start our next stream. And to top it off, you'll even get 15 free dollars to use anywhere on the site just for signing up through our link. And if that's not cause the party, I don't know what is. Woohoo! <laughs> Yo, we should give these away on stream. Jimmy, these were just in our mouths. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's that's gross. These forces are acting... Ugh. Having some fleet command troubles? This armada battle is literally impossible. My alliance is taking on the board cube, but I don't have the firepower we need or the warp range to even get there in time. Well, have you tried using the Discovery summon ability to warp your fleet straight to the fight? The Discovery can summon other ships? I was just looking at damage. It sounds like you've got some learning to do. Star Trek Fleet Command is no place for mindless brute force. It is a game of strategy, precision, and coordination. Each crew of elite officers are handpicked for their ability to work together. When taking on the Borg, try using the Vidar with 5 and 6 of 11 on the bridge. Both the ship and the officers get a major stat boost when battling Borg targets. Pop quiz, the swarm is invading Federation space. What do you do? I don't know, lose? Incorrect. You upgrade the USS Franklin's phaser beams to Mark IV and promote Ahura to captain to mitigate their initial barrage. Oh, I get it. I need to optimize my plan based on the strengths and weaknesses this is my fleet and officers. Now that's thinking like a real commander. I need to crew my interceptor with Vartok and other Klingons for their war bugs. Then Kamal's officer ability should increase my shields. It's the perfect configuration to outmaneuver my opponent. A plus. Magna cum laude. Hey, you three, see me after class. I'm having trouble with Ferengi Raiders. You guys can help, right? Well, who's on your crew? Star Trek Fleet Command. Click the link in the description and download it now for free. You browsing for some new tech? Yeah, I'm building Team Out and Architect. Ooh, how about Zergo and Ojutai? Did you just drag and drop that card image directly into your deck? Yep, with Architect, you can drag and drop card images from EDH Rec or Scryfall directly into the deck list. No typing required. That is so cool. Ooh, okay, check this out. I'm gonna drag and drop Dragon Storm into the deck, and then boom, I'm gonna drop a bunch of dragons on the battlefield. A nine drop, huh? Seems ambitious. It was just for the pun. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. I will swing Ulamog. At who? At Jimmy. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I like the suspense though. <laughs> like, who's it gonna be? It's gonna be me. Okay, uh, yep. So on attack, Ulamog will trigger, and I'm going to exile another 20 cards off my library. Woo! Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> How much ammo you got over there? <laughs> I have 14 cards remaining in my library. Jeez. Uh, I will block your Ulamog with my Paco. Okay. And they'll bounce off each other. Tink. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and pass the turn. That's the end of your turn. Oh, God. Okay, great. Um, I will not do anything. I will move to my untap and to my upkeep. Miri's guy will trigger, so I'll look at the top three cards of my 14 card library. <laughs> That's all awful. <laughs> Everything's bad. Yeah, I guess I will put it on top like that and I will draw this card. I'm going to pay one and play a Sensei's Divining Top. I will then activate the top and look at the top three cards in my library. Sure. All still bad, but they will be milled away soon. I'm gonna go to combat and I'm gonna swing Paco at you, Ken. So on feud, it continues. When Paco swings, everyone exiles the top card of their library. Apex Devastator. 
Okay, oh, so no. please give me the cards you exiled. I got a Void Slime, a Legion's Landing, an Apex Devastator, and a three visits. So Paco will go to 21 plus one plus one counters. Ugh. All right, so I'll put those cards over here. He keeps bringing you toys. He, he does. He's like, like, hey, look what I got, Dad. That's so much better. My cat just brings me back dead animals. So <laughs> All right, to you, sir. In response. Yeah, they're gonna Piper something out. Not Piper. I will tap five mana. Uh-oh. Flash out Sorok. Sorok, Glor Dragon Claw, okay. And unfortunately, I have to throw him under the bus. So I will block with Sorok. I will then pay four mana, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna cast Seize the Day. Ooh. So I'll untap Paco, and I'm gonna get an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Yeah. That is your second spell for turn, so I will draw for Margara. Paco's gonna untap, Mesmeric Orb will trigger, and I will mill one card. I'll go to combat. Mm -hmm. Paco's gonna swing one more time at you, Ken. Everyone, please exile the top card of your library. All right, please give me those cards. That is four non-creature spells, so Paco's gonna get five plus one plus one counters. <laughs> that is a big dog. It is now a 29-29. <laughs> In response, yep. I will block with Elvish Piper. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I will pay a green to tap the Elvish Piper to bring out Kira. Perfect. Rhythm of the Wild trigger, Kira will get a 1-1 counter. And after combat damage, of course, Elvish Piper will eat it. Can't get past his blockers. <laughs> All right, I will activate my Sensei's Divining Top. Look at the top three. Ugh. I'll leave it on top like that. And then I will play this Zurin Orb from hey. Exile. And then I'm gonna sacrifice two lands and I will gain four life thanks to the Zurin Orb. I'm gonna 66. Okay, that's gonna do it for me. I'll pass turn. Before your end step, I will tap for four mana. Again, do nothing with it, and then move to my turn. Yep. Untap. All right, I'm gonna untap with you and mill for Mesmeric Orb. So I will untap one, two, three, four, five, six things, and mill six cards. Oops. I have four cards left in my library. I will also mill because of Mesmeric Orb, and I'll also mill six cards. Three of those cards will be lands, and I'll get three plus one counters on Slogurk. Uh, then I will draw for turn. I will play a Gaia's Cradle as my land for Woo! turn. All right, it taps for one mana. Oh, wait, wait. Trigger Field of the Dead. I get a zombie and it taps for two mana. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to cast a Hadana's Climb. I will move into combat to trigger Hadana's Climb. Mm -hmm. I will put a plus one counter onto Slogurk. And that will trigger the Hadana's Climb for it to transform. And it transforms into the Winged Temple of Oroska. Cool. I am going to go ahead and pass the turn at that point. Mm. On your end step, I'm going to activate Lion Sash. First, Derek, I'm going to exile your Blast Zone and put a counter on my Lion Sash because it was a permanent. And then I'm going to exile your Island, Derek. All right, I will untap and I will mill eight from Mesmeric Orb. Jeez. Then I will draw for turn. Oh, on my upkeep, I am not gonna pay Karmic Guide's Echo Cost, so I will sacrifice it, and I will draw two cards from the Skull Clamp. Kill Ulamog, please. <laughs> I definitely can, but first I'm gonna do this, because this is fun. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna cast a Maria Shepherd. Oh, cool, yeah. A Maria Shepherd will trigger the Oketra's Monument, and I will make another Warrior. Then I'm going to play a Plains. That will trigger my Mary Shepherd. Because it's a Plains, I can put a non-land permanent card from my graveyard onto the battlefield. Uh-oh. With a Mary Shepherd, I'm going to bring back the Karmic Guide. Interesting. And Karmic Guide will enter, and I can bring back a friend, a Palace Jailer. When the Palace Jailer enters, I become the Monarch and I will attempt to exile Kira. Because this is the first time Kira has been targeted, Palace Jelly will fail in this attempt. Yeah, it's hard to arrest a, what, jellyfish? <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> then I'm gonna pay two. You'll need a Ghostbuster for that. And I am going to cast a Ghostbuster, a Skyclave apparition. <laughs> ah. I have a cast trigger, I make another warrior token. And then on ETB, I will attempt to exile Kira once again. You feel good about this? No. You feel good about this? It is a huge inefficiency. <laughs> <laughs> and Kira will die. I'm in danger. Okay. Mono white. <laughs> Here we go. Mono white stuff. All right. I will go to combat and Ken, the coast is clear. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to attack you with Mangara and four warrior tokens. Yeah, uh -huh. We gotta bust that pretty face up. Yeah, it's oh, a little bit. That's nice. Just a little bit. I, and I will take my Ulamog lumps. There is 10 damage coming your way. I don't harbor any revenge whatsoever. I don't believe you. You said 10 damage? Uh-huh. 
I'm gonna take it with a smile on my face. I believe, I appreciate that. It's six more commander damage, so keep no, smiling. No, anger actually cooks you on the inside. There are a couple of damage triggers. I will resolve Hearth and Home first. So I will go get a planes from my deck and I'm going to target the Karmic Guide. So the planes will come into play. Karmic Guide will re-enter the battlefield. And this time I'm going to reanimate Avacyn, Angel of Hope. Not good. I blame Miss Mariclorp. Yeah. <laughs> when that planes enters the battlefield, that triggers my Ameria Shepherd, so I will reanimate once again. And I'm going to bring back an Angel of the Runes. Oof. When Angel of the Runes enters the battlefield, I can exile up to two artifacts and or enchantments. I am going to attempt to exile the Rhythm of the Wild and the Mesmeric Orb. What is going on? Haste scary. <laughs> you don't have to keep kicking a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> the orb has done me well, but it will run away to exile. And Mangara has lifelink, so I will gain six and go to 50. Then Sword of Feast and Famine will trigger, and I will untap my lands, and you will discard a card, Kim. Mesmeric Orb is gone. I'm going to tap Karu for two mana. I'm going to equip the Skull Clamp to my 1-1 one, one Warrior. It's now a 2-0, so it'll die immediately. And I'll draw two cards. Then I'll do it again and draw two more cards. Thank you very much. Poor warriors, they probably got families. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll play one and I'll cast a Mother of Runes. Of course I nice, oh, nice. Of course that's a mother. Casting a creature makes me another warrior token. I have a colorless floating. Then I will cast Adeline Resplendent Cathar. Nice. Two mana. Again, she's a creature spell, so I'll make another warrior. Okay, I think I've done plenty of damage. Uh, <laughs> with that, I am going to draw for Monarch and discard a hand size. This is so disgusting. <laughs> my hand size. This is, might be the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Jimmy, you don't exist anymore. Uh, no. Cool, man. I'm down to help. I I will untap. Question why I didn't play Pokemon. <laughs> draw for turn. I'm going to go ahead and play a land for turn. And then I will yell Leroy Jenkins <laughs> and attack right with the Ulamog. That seems right. fair. There is an attack trigger, so I will exile 20 cards from my library. That's a lot. Wait, how many cards left in library? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We can do it. We have the technology. <laughs> the power of friendship. Okay. I will block this Ulamog with one of my warrior tokens. You just make me feel better about blocking it with Avacyn. Just, just, just make me feel a little bit better. That sounds dangerous. Don't, 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 don't just chuck block it with the one one. Do it with Avacyn. He's a really tough one one. It's like a car being destroyed by a speed bump. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to float two mana with Temple of the False God. I'll also tap a forest to float mana. I will sack that forest so that I may draw a card. I will do it again. <laughs> I will tap mana to sack an island to draw a card. I have two mana floating. Yep. So I'm just gonna pay six to cast my commander. All right, into in the house. I hope you dream of a better situation. <laughs> In response to your intent, I'm going to tap one and use my Sensei Divining Top to look at the top three cards of my four card library. 75% of the Behold. deck with one card? Oh, it's the perfect time to see Ragavan. <laughs> I'll put that back. I'm going to tap for four mana and I will cast C double. So I will create a copy of a target spell. That'd be your intent, the dreamer. Knew about Jimmy's trap, and I forgot about it. And then I'm going to create a token that's a copy of target creature. It's Ulamog. There we oh, go. No. So intent Ulamog. I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn. I will go to untap to my upkeep. I'm going to Miri Skyle again. Oh, I bet those cards are different. Yeah, they aren't. <laughs> I'll uh, keep these and I will draw this card as my card for turn. Okay, I'm gonna kick things off first by topping one more time and looking at the all three cards in my library. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I will play one of these forests from exile and then I'm going to tap for three mana. Yep. And I'm gonna cast my Dak Faden from exile. Mm -hmm. And he's going to minus two to go to one, and Rachel, I'm going to attempt to steal your Sword of Feast and Famine. My Sword of Feast and Famine? Yeah. All right, stolen. There you are, deck. All right, I'm going to pay two mana, and I'm gonna equip the Sword of Feast and Famine to Paco, Arcane Retriever. That's a big boy. That is a big boy. Big puppy. I am now going to go to combat. Beginning of combat. 
I can feel this Ulamog breathing down my neck and I feel like I have to try and draw an answer here. So I am going to pay one and sacrifice a land to Derek's excavation to draw a card. Not gonna do it. Let's do it again. Pay one, sack a land. Draw a card. Oh my god, oh my god. I'm gonna try to path your Ulamog? In response, I'm gonna I know you have counter spells. <laughs> three mana, and I'm gonna force some negation in. <laughs> is that your second spell? That is my second spell. I will draw for Mangara. That is not a second path to exile, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, there's you two still in there. Hang, hang on. <laughs> he hang can still on. Still excavate. If I see a second one, we're gonna have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a swords in the exile already. I'm gonna pay one. And I'll sack this. That's not gonna do it either. <laughs> All right, your force of negation will counter my answer. And Path will go to the graveyard. And I will leave one mana up here. Kinda sounds like you only have one more mana. <laughs> <laughs> it is, that's true. I have, this is my final mana. <laughs> he said the thing. All right, I'm gonna go to combat now, finally. And I'm gonna first swing Paco at you again. Okay. And I'm gonna swing Ulamog at you, Rachel. Ooh. Ulamog and Paco's trigger will both happen. Everyone please exile the top card of your library to Paco. Mm-hmm. Wheel of Fortune, very funny. <laughs> so everyone please give me those cards, I will fetch them. All right, that's three non-creatures. Paco's gonna get four plus one plus one counters due to hardened scales. He's now a 35-35, thanks to Sword of Feast of Famine. And then Ulamog's trigger will happen as well, and Rachel, you will need to exile the top 20 cards of your library. I can do nothing about that. I will exile these, which are less than 20, and will have no cards left in my library. You know what, Jimmy? I thought we were friends. We're I said not. none of my removal <laughs> your way. What? None. I touched you not at all, so you know what I'm gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna save Ken right now. Oh boy. I'm gonna pay one mana oh, and high. sacrifice this land mm -hmm. to draw. <gasps> No magic cards! Uh -huh. I lose the game. But oh, you know what also no. loses the game? My sword of feast and famine. No! <laughs> uh... wait, wait, where'd my library go? <laughs> okay, well, Paco's now a 33 33. Uh, he likes the petty's contagious. Yeah, I, yeah. Just... I want you to look me in the eyes as I block your creature. <laughs> <All> right, please. <laughs> I'm gonna block it. Okay. And to make you feel worse, I'm gonna sack it in response. Nice. Because I die while I'm the monarch, Jimmy, you, the active player, are now the king. It's like literally the worst oh, time yeah, to be Oh yeah, you're just gonna draw half your deck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, is there anything else I can do here? Nope, I pass turn, I'm the monarch, I draw the second to last card in my library. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, you're right, oh my gosh is right. I'm going to untap. Uh, when you untap, I also untap my stuff. And draw for turn. I wanna play a snow-covered island as my land for turn. Hey, zombie. That will get me a zombie token. And uh, hope for the best. So let's tap for three mana. I'll tap one, two, and three, along with my winged temple of Araska to give Slogurk plus X plus X and flying. And Ken, I love you, so I need to do this for you. I need to send you into the, the dragon afterlife. I'm going to swing a 14-14 Slogurk at you in the air. I just saved him. You did. <laughs> I, get, I just it you, felt you, much better. I appreciate you giving me, me that. You could have killed me on the turnaround. <laughs> no, no, not like this. <laughs> and then I need to choose a new defender for this invasion of Kaldheim, so it's gonna be you. Uh, I am going to then pass the turn. On your end step, I'm going to tap a forest, and I'm going to channel Boseju, and I'm gonna destroy the Maze of Ith. Mmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. I will put sadness on the stack and allow that to happen. So the maze of Ith is going to get destroyed. And okay. I'll search for a land with a basic land type. Yep. Okay. So the island entering will trigger my field of the dead. In response to the field of the dead trigger, I'm going to tap three and I'm going to cast your void slime to counter it. Oh. So you don't get an extra zombo. No zombo. Two no. zombies. My horde stays at two. Yep. So that void slime goes here, graveyard. And Slogurt gets a counter because my Maze of Ith was destroyed and it's now an 8 8. Okay, let's go ahead now and untap all my stuff. I will draw. Big draws. My last card in Spin my library the top. for 10. <laughs> <laughs> go out on your own terms. I'm going to pay two mana and I will dash out a Ragavan. Hey! Let's go to combat. I'm going to swing at you with everything. Aw, they love me. Including my Birds of Paradise. <laughs> Just for yeah. A certain yeah. dominance. 
So there's gonna be two triggers. Paco's gonna hip in first. Everyone exile the top card of your library. All right, it's a forest. Paco gets two more plus one plus encounters. One from the forest and one from hardened scale. So it's a 35, 35. And now you're gonna exile 20 cards because of Ulamog. Nice. These cards are exiled, so I will have a response then after attacks are declared. Yep. Oh boy. I will tap for two mana. Uh oh. I'm gonna cast a constant miss. <laughs> Are you gonna buy it back? <laughs> I will. I will sacrifice my Yavamaya to buy it back to him. I was gonna go do another combat and cast Seize the Day to do it, but it doesn't matter. I have nothing left. I'm gonna draw because I'm Monarch at the end of turn. So that's gonna be it. Good game. Good game. There you wow. go. <laughs> I died the milling. Ah! And then I win. Slogan. Victory. All right, congratulations, Boom. Derek. Ribbit, 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 slow gurk, slowly doing this thing, yeah, that's getting true. there. Slowly milling you out. Jimmy, let me know. Yeah, How does it feel to join the club? Uh, to get milled out? Yeah. It feels pretty. You know what? At least I died to my own deck. <laughs> Hey, listen, you <laughs> died doing what you love, which is like untapping with Seedborn Muse. It's yeah. more like doing you died doing what I love, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah I love that a, you died that way. It yeah. was a fun way to go out, but it was great. Slowgurg really, at the at the beginning, it was like, oh no, Rachel's building up that value, got to take her out. And then Slowgurg just sits there and ribbits his way to a victory. It was cool because I was like, oh no, Slowgurg's not doing anything the whole time. And then by the end, I was like, oh, they're... They're crushing me. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. If you like this game, if you liked any of the cards played in it, if you want to pick up magic cards, go to cardgame.com slash command. It's the best place to go to get all your magic products, singles, anything at all. They have a huge inventory. They have all the cards you're looking for in the versions you're looking for, in the condition you're looking for. And the best thing is they are one site, which means when you put the stuff in the cart, you know, maybe 63 or so cards, uh -huh. and then you hit checkout, it all comes from one spot. It all comes from the same place in one one envelope. It all arrives on your doorstep together. Yeah, and then ultrapro.com slash command, the game accessories brand that Josh and I trust. They have the official license to use real magic art, so you're going to see some amazing stuff. They also have great deals all the time on their newsletter, so make sure you sign up and check that out. Whatever it is, Ultra Pro has got you covered for game accessories, and uh, just use that affiliate link, ultrapro.com slash command. And one more thing before we go, we want to let everybody who doesn't already know know that we are going to be at MagicCon Chicago yeah. in February. We're going to be performing Game Nights Live. If you haven't seen the show, if you're thinking about attending the con, we highly recommend it. Please arrive there on Friday early enough. That's February 23rd to see the show. We are playing on the main stage at 4 p.m. Yeah. Trying to arrive, you know, early enough to check into your hotel, put your bags down, get on over to the convention center, get your bag, get in, get seats. You don't need an extra ticket yep. to get there. You just need a Magic Con badge and you'll be able to watch the show. Yeah, we hear from people all the time on Saturdays and Sundays. They're like, when's Game Nights Live? And we're like, <laughs> uh, it was on Friday. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah, and so I know you have to take days off and it's not, you know, the easiest thing for everybody, but if you can all swing it, I, we highly recommend. It is, you know, the... <laughs> It's Listen, the highlight. We're that. biased. But yes, we think it's the best part of the con. We think the show is super, super fun. The professor's going to be there playing in the game. That's going to turn it up to 11. Oh, so yeah, yeah please come game. and join us at Magic Con Chicago on February 23rd. And don't forget to check out the One More Mana guys on YouTube as well. We'll have all those links in the show notes below as well as the deck list, which everyone always asks about. Yep. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a happy new year. Happy new year. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.